We can play our music today. We can enjoy the soundtrack of the show today. Because uh, there's not a million people waiting to go through. I promise you, history was made yesterday in terms of the phone calls that came through on this uh, Metro FM show between 6 and 7. It was incredible. It's 10 after the hour 6. Welcome to it. My name is Andy Lingube. This is Sports That Amplified with Andy Lee on the mighty Metro FM. Thank you so much to Tibo Touch and the gang. They do it again tomorrow for the last time this week between 3 and 6. I can imagine there's going to be a lot of, um, of our people going down to the Durban July uh, starting from tomorrow. So you can imagine. Malcolm, are you going? No, oh, Timmy. Timmy, are you going? Oh, Timmy and Malcolm uh, down to the July there. But uh, for you and I, I guess we must sit here. Mulefinzeki is still the talk of town. Lucas Khatebe has had a lot to say when asked about Mulefinzeki. How does Lucas Khatebe feel about uh, his former club having hired Mulefinzeki? He hasn't minced his words. He has not minced his words. So we'll play you what uh, he's had to say. But also remember, guys, Mulefinzeki is not new to the Premier League. He's not new to what we now know as the DSTV Premiership. And somebody yesterday said something that seems to have touched a lot of people. Corner for Neil. It wasn't a phone call. I think it was a voice note to me. What are guys are winning a shimbos? Is that fair to say that about a man who many might have seen as quite accomplished in what he's done? He's been in the premiership before working as an assistant coach. You remember that? A blue in Celtic. Who was the head coach at the time? So what if we go and we speak to that head coach and say, hey, are you surprised by this? Is this man ready for this? What do you make of this man? You worked with him. So let's do that then. It's a throwback Thursday. So let's throw back to a time when Willie Fenteke worked in the DSTV Premiership alongside a coach at Bloom Celtic. So let's go speak to him and find out what his thoughts are. Hmm? It's 12 after the hour 6. Welcome to it. Uh, I'll let you know what he had to say. And then we'll go to Opta. We couldn't go to Opta yesterday because I wanted to give all of you an opportunity uh, to, 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 to speak your feelings, your first thoughts. We'll go to Opta. Opta sent me all the stats here on Mulefinteki's history. From back in 1998, he's come all the way to Bloemfontein Celtic uh, in 2014 and then goes all the way to his win rate but also looks at what Chiefs have done with their last six coaches. And at 16 and 18.45, rather, we'll take your calls and open your lines and maybe would have changed your thoughts. Because I think what we did here, on this show in particular, I, I fear that we sold Nabi to you. I fear that we sold Nabi to you so much that anything that you could have gotten after, it didn't matter because we had sold Nabi so much. We had Beetle here saying, hey, he's such an amazing coach and, you know, he's a, he's a big coach in Africa. We had a, a journalist and commentators and everybody in Tanzania that we had on the show saying, hey, you know, what an amazing coach. Chiefs are going to be the better off. And I think we were all sold on that idea that when something else came that wasn't what we expected, it might, it might have played an impact in your initial response. You've had 24 hours now to sleep on it. What are your thoughts now? Let's take a break. When we come back, up to Jabu gives us the stats and then we go to the coach that knows Malefi better than most. Welcome to it. at 16 after the hour six. It's a conversation that has divided the nation. Many happy that a son of the soil, a local, a South African, is yet again at the helm of Kaiser Chiefs as the head coach after he was announced yesterday. Mule Finzeki has taken on alongside Athazwane and Dylan Shepherds as his assistants. Many others are feeling like Chiefs have not gone out of their way to make sure that they're competitive come next season with teams that seemingly, when you look at their technical team and also their arsenal of players as Super Sports United, maybe even, you know, Sundowns, Orlando Pirates, Stellenbosch and Cape Town City, are these teams with the current technical team that they have that they would be able to compete with? Are they elevating where they were last season from where they are now? A man that has had uh, a couple of words to say about this when asked was Lucas Khatebe. Here he is having a word about Kaiser Chiefs. I think for me, as, as big as the club as Kaiser Chiefs, you need, you, you need someone who's going to be um, quality in terms of, of coaches, you know, with a, with a great reputation. You know, because I think with him, he's been there, he's been with the national team. And I'm not saying that uh, he wouldn't make an impact. He will definitely make an impact. But for a club like Kaiser Chiefs, you need a, a coach that will actually change the players individually and make them better. I think Kaiser uh, Chiefs could have done better. 
Well, Lucas Khatebe, the chief, as he's known, Ru, continues to speak about the new appointment uh, of uh, Mulef Nzeki at Kaiser Chiefs. This time around, though, speaking about the coaches and the coaching changes at Chiefs. Up to Jabba, I'm going to be calling him in a couple of seconds as well. He'll give us exactly the numbers and how they look. But have a listen to what Lucas Khatebe had to say. You know, it's a pity that the coaches have been judged by the results, you know, and, uh, but uh, to be able to have a, a stable team that consistently does well, you know, I mean, we've seen with other teams that have done well, you know, uh, in the continent, the national teams, is they, they keep the same coach for a period of time. You know, there's a chance of him, you know, uh, forming a strong, very strong team with people that he'll rely on and that you'll see week in, week out, you know, playing, building his own team. And then you stand a chance of winning thing. But if you're going to be changing coaches, you know, in a very short period of time, then you then something must be wrong. Because we always blame the coaches, but I, I, sometimes I think you've got to look somewhere else to, to get, you know, uh, uh, where uh, uh, the, the core of the problem is. That is a former Kaiser Chiefs player there and legend at the club, Lucas Khatebe, speaking about uh, the coaching changes at Kaiser Chiefs. He doesn't just stop there. He speaks as well about silverware at a club as big as Kaza Chiefs. Have a listen to this. This is Lucas. At, the, at this point, I mean, uh, looking at the club, I think it'll take them a few steps to get to, to the point where you think this is the club that is worth winning uh, 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 silverware because they, get to, they have to get to that level first. <coughs> and then, then you can say yes, you know, in the country. Because, I mean, a club like Kaza Chiefs, they have to be competing in Africa. They have to be Top three, top five teams in Africa, you know, and uh, that's what you expect from them. And if you expect that, you know, there's a lot of, when you look around the, those teams that have, that are at the top and you look at their coaching staff, it says a lot about that. Well, there you have it. Uh, those are the words of uh, the chief there, Lucas Khatebe. Uh, I'm going to play you one more in, in just a bit. Uh, I mean, it, it all speaks towards the same thing, really, about how he feels and what Lucas thinks, that this is not the appropriate um, appointment for a Kaiser Chiefs. But before we do that, let's go to Opta Jabu. Um, you follow him on Twitter. It's at Opta Jabu. He's our resident statistician here. He's a man that keeps the records of the PSL and beyond. Yeah, Opta, thank you so much for joining us, Lindelo. We're still telling us about uh, Nzeki's history, the new man appointed out at Kaiser Chiefs. You're saying this is a career that started back in 1998? Good evening, Andile. Good evening to you and the listeners. Yes, this is a career that started back in 1998. Tell me about it. What was Nzeki doing in 1998? So in 1998, he was already a head coach. Hey, right? this is around the time that the PSL is starting, and he's a head coach at Vodacom Stars in the Vodacom League back then. He okay. spent about five years there before moving on to uh, Harmony Sports Academy, where again he spent another stint of about five years until 2007. Okay. Thereafter, he then goes to African Wanderers, spends time as a head coach in the NFD. A shorter period of time this time, just around three years. Hmm. And he was the and head coach at, at the Warriors, right? He was a head coach at the Warriors. He's been a head coach for a long time. If we're talking about experience, we always talk about people like Gavin Hunt and Smidendop. But then in terms of head coaching, Molefi would be one of the veterans in the division at the moment. Okay. And then from there, where does he go after 2009? And after 2009, as you mentioned, he then goes to Bloemfontein Celtic, spends two years in as, as an assistant coach, and then another two years as a youth head at the same club. So two years between 2010 and 2012, he's the assistant. Um, and then from there, he moves on to be the Bloemfontein Celtic youth, head of the youth, basically. Yes, basically that's what happens there. In this time, you've given me 1998 to 2014. As assistant, as head coach, has he promoted any team? Has he won any silverware? What would you say are the accolades that come from him during that period? So we do see a promotion, Andile. With Vodacom Stars back in the Vodacom League, he does promote them up to the NFD. All right. And at Bloemfontein Celtic? Yes. At Bloemfontein Celtic, they had a couple of, I think, cup finals, but then they never really won anything around that time. Okay, makes it to cup finals as the assistant coach there. And then 2014, that's when he leaves Bloemfontein Celtic. What then happens to Mulefintek? 
So the way it looks here, Andele, is that he's proved himself on a club level, even if not in the top flight. So then he moves now into the national teams. And he spends some time with the under-17s, actually taking them to the World Cup in 2015. Yeah, I remember that. It wasn't a very successful run, that was it? It was not. Unfortunately, they finished at the bottom of their group, uh, a tournament that was known for the rising of Victor Osimhen, who reached the final in that year. And then he gets roped into Bafana Bafana. What year are we in now that he moves now from the 2015? We move on to the next year after that World Cup. What happens? Yeah, so around from 2015 to 2022, the last five, six years, he's roped into the under-17s, he's roped into the under-20s, and also the under-23s as well. And then the big one comes, Bafana Bafana. And then the big one comes as an assistant to Bafana Bafana, and then later on he gets to become the actual head coach of Bafana Bafana, almost reaching 10 games in a span of 20 months. 20 months, nine matches. How did he do in those nine matches? 20 months, nine matches. It's international football. You know how those games are scattered. He wins four games, draws two, and loses three, ending up with a win rate of 44%. Hmm. Let's move away from Zeki. He's appointed at Kaiser Chiefs, but what has Chiefs' appointment been looking like in the last couple of years? What is the uh, coaching turnaround time? So, yes, there's been a lot of revolving doors here at Kaiser Chiefs in the last five seasons. So he is the sixth permanent coach since Steve Compella left the club in the last five seasons. Wow. But before then, it took Kaiser Chiefs 15 seasons to go through six coaches, um, starting from 2003 until 2015. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're saying since 2003, 2004... You know, yes. since Steve Compella, basically, actually, they've had six yes. coaching changes, right? Six coaching changes, indeed. In a very short span of time. But before that, in, short span of time, in the same years. amount of time, Kaiser Chiefs had 15, in 15 seasons, they went to six coaches. So what they've done now in a short period of time is something that would have taken them 15 seasons back in the day. It would have taken them three times the amount of time back in the day. So there's definitely a change in something. There is definitely something happening. I mean, we're talking about a coach every other season here now. And the trophy drought, we all know about that. It's, it's, it's evident. It is evident. We know it in years. We know it in, in, in terms of, of seasons as well. Give it to but me. What is the it? Milestone that's coming up. The milestone that's coming up is not a good one for Kaiser Chiefs fans. On the 26th of July... It will be 3,000 days since Kaiser Chiefs last won a trophy. Yeah. 26th of July. So when it sits 26th of July, it'll mark day 3,000 since Stuart Baxter. And uh, I think Dr. Kumal was the assistant at the time when they lifted, uh, the, was it the league to me? Yeah, must the have league been. league title, yes. Yeah. Talk, I mean, you've had Zwane, Baxter, Hunt, Middendorp. You had Solinas at some point. Compella and Baxter started it all. Who's had the best yes. win rate? Who's been the most successful of those coaches? So of those coaches, we're talking about the last 10 seasons now. It's obviously Stuart Baxter in his first spell, to be specific. A 61% win rate, which is phenomenal, basically. The time Kaiser Chiefs won two titles in three seasons. And who's had the worst span? Unfortunately, the worst spell has been Gavin Hunt when he spent time at Chiefs about two seasons ago. A 21% win rate for him before he was released by the club. I mean, I hear a lot of people pointing fingers at Steve Compella. How did he do? Steve Compella, he went long. Hey, He ended up with a 39% win rate, which places him in third from bottom among the last six coaches at Kaiser Chiefs. Zwane, how did he do? Zwane tried. Zwane tried a lot. Unfortunately, he lost those last three games of the season. He would have been actually the second best since Stuart Baxter if he had won any of those. If, the, if he had won those three games, but in the end, he ended up with a 43% win rate, placing him third of the last six coaches that had been at the club. Ladies and gentlemen, his Opta Jabu on Twitter. Ask Opta. Get out there and uh, ask whatever it is that you need, and we'll use this as a portal and a vessel to air out everything that you'd like to know. Opta, I think uh, we're a little bit better uh, knowledgeable now 
on the subject matter. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming on. All the best, Andy. Always a pleasure being with you guys. It's 30 after the hour six. It's Linda Lamoya representing after Jabu. Let's take a break. Because the club is Kez Achieves. You need, you, you need someone who's going to be um, quality in terms of, of coaches, you know, with a, with a great reputation. You know, because I think Kutin Lefintek, he's been there, he's been with the national team. And I'm not saying that uh, he wouldn't make an impact. He will definitely make an impact. But for a club like Kez Achieves, you need a, a coach that will actually change the players individually and make them better. You know, because most of the time we we always want to buy ready-made players and take players from Sundowns and bring up here yeah, who's who's quality. But can you take him to the next level? So I think that's what kind of coach that this club needs. Great that they they they, they appointed him leave, but I don't doubt he, he his skill. But I think he could. Have, uh, the Kedah Chiefs could have done better, you know, and having Muli, if he was, he's been there anyway, having me, ha- have him in the fold. Hmm. Well, there it is. It's uh, 1834. Those are the words of Lucas Khatebe there. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mpatele, for that there. On the line right now, though, I've got a current coach of Mike Gacy, oh. former coach of Summerfield Dynamos and a Bloomfield Celtic between 2014, 2015 and 2010, 2013. Clinton Larson joining us on the line now. Clinton, it's been a while. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome, coach. Good evening, Andile, and good evening to all the listeners. How are things down at Mike Gacy? Oh, so far, so good. We've started our um, pre-season um, uh, a week ago. So, uh, yeah, we're just trying to whoop the boys into shape. I mean, there was so much hope uh, from me and everybody around you, you know, with that uh, Summerfield Dynamo's dream to see it fulfilled, to see you take, uh, uh, you know, that whole neighborhood up. Uh, very sad that, uh, I mean, it, it didn't quite fulfill. Yeah, listen, that was the the whole idea uh, when we started the project. Um, But unfortunately, you know, I had to leave uh, after I received the call from uh, from Agassi. And um, I still believe that they've got enough quality and the structures within their team at Dynamos to, to still get the team up to the NFD. Well, we do hope so. But coach, I mean, of course, we're calling you today because you would have known, you would have heard it. And I thought to myself, Timmy and I had a conversation and I said, you know, if we're going to get an insight into who Muli Fenteki is, there's only one coach at a senior level that knows him all too well that was with him at Bluefoot and Celtic during the time uh, that you guys were at uh, the Premier League division team. Were you surprised at all to hear Kaiser Chiefs announcing Muli Fenteki? What was your initial reaction to that? I wasn't really surprised, Andile, because um, as a senior coach within the club, with the experience that he has at international level, I thought myself, why not uh, give him the opportunity to, you know, to 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 see how he um, takes this challenge on. Um, and as you've said, I know him quite well from the year I spent with him before he went to the to the national team. And um, I do believe that um, he's a very astute coach, who, given the right support, could uh, surprise a lot of people. El- <laughs> I mean, the many fears, Coach, are coming because uh, of, of the stature of Kaiser Chiefs, number one. Number two, his experience as a head coach at that level. I mean, when he did work in the league, it was under you. Yes, it was It was one season in the Premier League. And like I said, thereafter, um, he was approached by, um, by Safa, Safa and, yeah. and took on the, I, I think it was the under-17 national team at the time. And then really grew into his own at international level, you know, moving up the, up the ranks. Um, but I do believe that he has what it takes to be successful as a coach in the PSL. You know, some of the things that really stood out for me was um, his management style when he worked with me. You know, he's um, he's a type of coach that also keeps abreast with the modern trends in football. But his management style for me was one where he's very respectful of the players and of the people that work with him, whether it be the tea lady or the kit manager. Um, and he'll create, for sure, a very healthy working relationship for everybody at Kaiser Chiefs. Such is his personality and um, and character. Um, and as a result, I'm sure we'll have more productive players working in a, in a, in a good environment that he will definitely create. Um, and on the tactical side, I do believe that uh, he's a student of the game. 
um, and having that international experience, working with the likes of Stuart Baxter and others at international level, I think that um, you know the time is right for for Malifi and Tseke to uh, show what he's capable of um, at the highest level of South African football. Coach, it's very difficult to you know pin somebody's style of football and 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 they mind and how they like to play using a national team simply because you know you don't get a lot of time to ingrain players in what you want and he only had 20 months and nine games so we never really got to see what his type of football is you worked with him at training fields every single day if you were to say this is the kind of football that Mulefi enjoys that he likes to play that uh, you spoke about and you know what he wanted to push forward more what kind of football coach is he what kind of football does he like to see does he like to play well based on based on the year uh, the season i spent with him at celtics and our conversations we had one thing that uh, was clear to me was that um, he he wanted his team to play an attacking brand of football and um and th- and that's what we we brought to the celtic team you know a team that uh, plays with quick ball circulation uh, a team that attacks at every opportunity it can um and and a team that is balanced between having possession and knowing when to when to when to um attack a team with pace um trying to find that balance is something i believe that um, he could achieve with the type of players he'll have at his disposal um so yes if if i had to put it in a nutshell he would definitely bring a, a very fast attacking brand of football um to the club and um yeah it's going to be very interesting to see how successful he is uh doing that coach do you believe in big teams and big coaches that if you have a big team within the dtv premiership and you know there's a handful of the so-called big teams that they need a coach who comes with a big reputation they need a the so-called big coaches as well i mean the the nabi name was being mentioned etc cetera, etc cetera. do you think that plays a role when it comes to those particular teams? Or do you think, you know, anybody can get in there as long as they've got the right um, attitude and the right backing as well as the right, maybe, you know, education, they can go forth and still conquer and still do well? Well, uh, maybe you're asking the wrong person who, who a big coach in South Africa is. Um, if we want to talk success, yes, there are some names we could mention, but... Uh, if we're talking um, Molefi and Seki, why isn't he a big coach when he's coached the senior national team of South Africa, you mm-hmm. know? And um, I, like I said before, um, he's coached in a pressure environment. Yes, we all know uh, Kaiser Chiefs, the likes of Kaiser Chiefs, is a different um, kettle of fish altogether when it comes to dealing with pressure. But uh, I believe that... Um, He's up for the task. Um, and like I said, um, you know, let's not shoot the man down before he's even started. Like other coaches have got the opportunity, why not give Malefi and Turkey an opportunity to show what he can do? Coach, we wish you the very best. Uh, have you had a conversation with him to say congratulations? Not yet, but I definitely will very soon. Well, when you do, please pass him a congratulatory message as well. We appreciate you, Coach, and uh, I can't wait to one day speak to you for your appointment in the DSTV Premiership again. Thank you so much, Andile. Appreciate it. Coach uh, Clinton Larson there, former Bloomfield and Celtic coach, who was the head coach at the time when Mulefinteki was there as his assistant. I think I've painted a picture here that has been very weighed on both sides. You've had the Lucas speak. You've had uh, the Opta Jabu give you the statistical measure of it and then of course we went and got a coach who worked with him closely what are your thoughts now Mazola Malefe had his thoughts yesterday I'll play you those and then leave it up to you it's a throwback Thursday we'll throw it back to his career it's exactly 1844 on the mighty Metro FM welcome to it it's a big story isn't it it's one that um, had the internet stand still yesterday crashing the website of Kaiser Chiefs as well they finally announced a coach and that coach is Mulefin Tseki Lucas Khatebe has had his piece we've spoken to a coach that knows them all too well we gave you the statistic as to how it looks as far as his career has been so far so now let's go to our journalist in-house here at the SABC he was here yesterday and he gave us a couple of facts of what he thinks of this. I think Mazola Malefe, to be honest, called him a panic decision. Have a listen. 
I think it's a panic move, and this is not to put question marks on Coach Nzeki's credentials. As I've said, I, I rate him highly. I think what he's done with the youth structure is unbelievable. Panic move in the sense that they had been in negotiations with uh, Nazreddin Nabi, but they couldn't agree on two simple things. Well, maybe maybe more. I, I don't know the finer details of everything, but what I do know for a hand, with absolute certainty, with I speak with authority, the coach wanted his technical team and obviously the terms of employment and his 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 wages. But with Coach Nteki, perhaps there's not a lot of that involved. He's been in the structure. So yeah, that is Mazda Malefe and uh, his thoughts on it. He called it a panic move. We're going to play some of her voice notes. You can send them to us on 060-552-7303. Give us a call on 086-000-2160. Taking your calls right now. Yeah, yeah. we going to get them. Get connected. What's at the Metro FM studio? Good evening, Andile and Studio Crew. Please accuse myself to retrospectively ventilate my sentiments as a Chiefs Arden supporter. I opine the appointment of Milifinzeki as a head coach for such a colossal club of Chiefs Caliber was created with dismay, having failed to rope in Navi after he has been postulated for the job. The entire Chiefs managerial echelon needs restorative therapy to resuscitate their former glory days. It is exomatic that failure to acquire a Tunisian born coach stems from Chiefs' parsimonious disposition and lack of emulous attitude. Both Muli Finzeghi and Athazwani are still coaching toddlers, if not midgets. Maloru to witness in Patele, Chirio. Uh, good. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, and I'd like to think, you know, my. My grasp of the English language is, is, is rather vast, you know, uh, I'm erudite with it. I, I know the words, but I can tell you now that I have no idea what Mr. Mpatele said there. Absolutely no idea, but uh, we love it. So keep them coming. Let's play more voice notes and then take in your calls. I see a lot of you lining up already, uh, and I hope that it's people that have had a, a proper think about what's happened over the last 24 hours. We've given you the background now because I fear that Coach Nabi from Tanzania who was there, of course, with Younger, we might have oversold him to you so much so that by the time it came for you to get the news that the coach, Malefintek, has taken over, it was a bit of a wet blanket for you. So let's play more voice notes. Uh, good, good evening, Andile. We are speaking to Chabu. Uh, the way my friends and chiefs were quite a corn is all. I was a nigga, no, Mulifinzeki chance, a water coach, a parting Funubona after two, three games, Guti Bona Lava, the phone is all. Bazo, we have a phone about police. We understand that because Mulifinzeki, who want to write to buy a fan and others one bigger than the right, just in Tantra being echo. The chiefs win a Velas Trialuguina for decades win a Pad Manji Manji Segna Gitang it. Melesilly were Pelanati, Sibu, Sibu Fila, Lubsung, Bibfila, Manyamatla, Pangit, Pat Mina Gunan Teng Ibona good next season is over right. Even no more others on a bigger still a coach, a bigger over right. Okay. I like the sentiment. There seems to be a change because yesterday was brutal. It was brutal. Play me one more. Andile. Hey. Nicholas here in Cape Town. Hey, Nicholas, been a while. Just before you, you make a call to your guest to to tell about um, Olaf and Zeki. Oh, it's already done. Sorry. He's a local coach for me. He's good. There's nothing wrong with him. The only thing that is wrong with Kaiser Chiefs is for them to buy players for the coaches. The coaches must buy their own players. Hmm. The coaches must choose their own technical teams. Hmm. You know? So that's that's the only thing that hurts Kaiser Chiefs very much. If they can uh, 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 get out of that kind of mentality, then then perhaps they will make it. They will make it in the first or second spot in the league this season. They must allow the guy to buy to buy his own players that he wants and allow him to play the way the way he wants to play. Thank hmm. you. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. So one more. One more. I mean, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't do so much. We'll go here from Springfontein. Hey, it's a boy. I was hoping that Kaiser Chiefs would give Atazwani until he, the conclusion of the MTN 8 and say, you had your first season, now go on and make sure that you win the MTN 8. I'm sure he would have won that. Cup, yeah, but then you, know, you don't get a new coach that starts with the team. 
But welcome to Coach uh, Mulifin Zegi. We'll hope for the best. And uh, let's see what the future holds for us. I don't know about that one. I don't know. Because you'd want a coach that is now in preseason, welcoming the players that are coming in, being involved in you know, the picking and perhaps um, uh, the, the, the buying of the players coming in. I don't know about leaving it to empty. Let's go straight to your calls. Vusi is out in uh, Boxburg. Uh, Vusi, hi. Welcome. How's it? I'm not going to um, okay, okay. Now, for me, I think uh, mm. take it might surprise most of us. Mm. When how many, how many, how many times? I remember when we uh, attended Kingston Valley, we excited, Kevin Hand, excited. <sighs> you know, this is it's, it's not it's not your fault. Don't worry, it's not your phones because it can't be everybody's phone out there that that is doing this. So it's definitely us. It's something that we need to look at, share with our phone lines. Um, but, I mean, I remember yesterday it started off like this, but like an old car, it warmed up, didn't it? So we're going we're gonna to take a break. And when we come back, Vusi, I'm terribly sorry, and I hope you're still on the line. Uh, Timmy, please uh, grab Vusi's uh, details and let's call him back because it's not his fault that we can't hear him. Gabelo, Clement, Sbongileni, Kayeli, Tabang, you're all next, and I see you, and we will get through it, and we will hear your views. Because I can tell you now that from yesterday till today, your Kaiser Chiefs, your management, they're listening to the show. And I'd love for them to hear from you. All right, let's try this again. Um, I, I want to hear from you. And so many of you have given up your time to call us. And uh, I always appreciate and uh, want to hear your views here in the show. Timmy, let's go for it. Let's start perhaps uh, with Osbong Eleni, who's uh, always a regular here out in KZN. Sbo. Oh. Now, Zog, get on coming. Talk to me. When in Tantla, I am. I'm going to Tambo. When I lost Bega Lang in Buziaco. Serious, ma. On the serious note, I was not mean to be harsh to the coach. Hmm. But I will go back to what you said uh, at the beginning of the show that I think the media and the way that we get the information about Unadi, we were expecting that uh, the team will announce him. Definitely. And then when they announced Omolefin Segi yesterday, we were caught by surprise. This and is then true. we went back to to check his history, which I think, ma'a, to be fair, is not convincing. What is not convincing? I mean, he, he was at Bloomington Celtic as an assistant. He's been at Bafana Bafana. He's been within the Safa realm for so long. What exactly, Ongaibon, is it the fact that he hasn't been a head coach at this league, at this level? Definitely, ma'a. And then the achievements need to be there for the for a team like Kika is a chief. I think you need a, a serial winner coach who got something to show. Nice. That I went to this particular team, I win this, and I win that. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. I, I always appreciate your views. Even when I don't agree with you, I appreciate you. Uh, let's go to Kaelise out in Richmond. Uh, right up in Richmond. Hello, hello, I'm not Hey, man, right, man. 
sub sub. Uh, yeah, uh, the appointment, my brother, he, it was a particular appointment. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but it's a particular appointment. <laughs> From now on, my stop, stop. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take that. that was the last one to me. We can't. These lines are just not working with us. I'll play that voice note one last time from Mr. Patele and then from then on we are here. Good evening, Andy and Studio Crew. Please acquiesce myself to retrospectively ventilate my sentiments as a Chiefs Arden supporter. Okay, I'm with you. I opined the appointment of Milifinzeki as a head coach for such a colossal club of Chiefs caliber was created with dismay, having failed to rope in Navi after he has been postulated for the job. Mm, I'm with you. The entire Chiefs managerial echelon needs restorative therapy to resuscitate their former glory days. It is exomatic that failure to acquire Tunisian born coach stems from Chiefs parsimonious disposition and lack of emulous attitude. Hmm. Both Muli Finzeki and Athazwani are still coaching toddlers, if not midgets. Maloru to witness in Patele. Shirio. My name is Andy Ngu. Me and my entire crew, including the lights, camera, action guys, Malcolm Glovo, Biso Snaps, the genius, Tabonkwala, and Titi, that's Timiti, Maranda. We're out of here tomorrow. It's Podcast Friday. Pela Pela. Manzo.